Welcome everyone again. Uh, my name is Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startup Commons. Uh, you know, one of the core missions and ongoing main targets for an ecosystem uh, should be to uh, maintain and cater comprehensive and dynamic information about uh, the available services with uh, good search and filtering functions, as well as uh, to be able to identify gaps in available services for ongoing ecosystem development. Uh, this valuable and but at the same time uh, hard uh, work can be only as effective as uh, the ability of ecosystem builders to understand at ecosystem level what is going on, what is missing, how it is performing and how to organize, uh, document, uh, coordinate, share and distribute uh, the available resources to help everyone navigate the ecosystem. And truth be told, doing this manually is simply crazy, right? And, and specific digital solutions should be in place to uh, overcome such challenges. We have seen many uh, approaches for this, uh, from simple directories to beautiful maps and, and infographics. Uh, all of them have contributed to help make ecosystems more transparent and accessible, uh, but we are still missing some key components. Uh, ecosystem mapping is not only about uh, getting to know uh, the general sense of the number and maturity level of startups available within your ecosystem, but most importantly, uh, the ecosystem actors and the infrastructure uh, that supports uh, startups from ideation to growth and make your ecosystem more competitive, as well as the level of connectivity amongst the different ecosystem actors in terms of uh, interactions, uh, sharing information, uh, knowledge and data to jointly operate in a more effective way. So that's the reason why we have invited uh, Benjamin Meyer to our webinar today. He is leading uh, the Great Swiss, Swiss Contact Program, an initiative that aims to identify best practice in entrepreneurship promotion and ecosystem building. Uh, Benjamin and his team are developing the social network analysis mapping tool, an open access web platform for ecosystem builders to uh, dynamically map and visualize entrepreneurial ecosystems uh, that has been piloted in uh, different uh, places like Guatemala, uh, Uganda, Rwanda, and Cambodia. And with the target basically to get a deeper understanding about how the different ecosystem actors interact with each other. We believe uh, it adds uh, a new layer to this existing ecosystem mapping exercise and from the Startup Commons side, uh, we are thankful to share this with all of you. Benny, uh, welcome to a Startup Commons webinar series and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Well, thanks a lot, Oscar, for uh, giving me that opportunity to present our work here on how we use social network analysis to really, as you mentioned, try to better understand ecosystems and also as a way to capture basically the ecosystem vibrancy. Um, so I'm really happy to be here and a very warm, very warm welcome from my side to all the participants. Um, I see that we have over 30 participants. That is really great. And I just uh, propose to jump straight into the presentation. So we do have enough time as well for getting your feedback, your input and questions you may have after that session. So let me maybe start sharing the presentation. Going to full screen. Can you now see the presentation? Brilliant. So um, maybe let's start about what are basically the topics I'm going to cover today. And um, I will start my presentation a little bit about um, what are common mis misperception around ecosystem building, what we figured out um, during my project, and why we personally believe we should bring our ecosystem more often to the doctor to do a health check. And I think this health check is really the core of what I'm going to present you today, and how we actually do this health check, and why this is important, 
um, is based on our understanding of social network analysis and what it brings us um, to the table and how we can um, basically better capture the dynamics within ecosystems. And I will provide you with um, some insights from our pilot project in um, Kigali and Cambodia. And then, as uh, Oscar mentioned, it's our vision to actually develop an open access platform, which ultimately will provide you with the tools that you are able to conduct your own health check on your own ecosystem. And this is what I want to present today. And I'm really happy to also get your viewpoints on that and actually to almost do a little bit of a of an idea validation as well on how relevant that is for you and how likely you will be um, to, to actually be using such a tool in the future. So before I start, maybe just very briefly something um, uh, about myself. So I'm working for Swiss Contact. Swiss Contact is a Swiss-based NGO and we are working in over 30 countries worldwide, mainly in emerging and developing countries. Um, as an organization, we do have quite some experience. We are over 60 years old. Um, we start working mainly around technical and vocational training. Very soon, we move more into SME support and local economic development. And over the last years, we also have been more and more engaged around um, promoting entrepreneurship and ecosystem building. And I think there is a little bit where we figured out is also um, what, what is ecosystem building? So ecosystem building, um, Okay, I just see that you actually see my notes, which shouldn't be the case. Let me see. Sorry about that. Let's go back. It, it is never a problem, Benjamin, to see the notes. I mean, <laughs> no, no, we, no. We, we all all use notes, so in, in that sense. The, the thing is different. The thing is because, um, I, I, as you will see, I will, I'm actually testing how to integrate Mentimeter directly in the presentation. That's yes, why yes. Screens. Okay, but okay, that's all. no problem. <laughs> that's good. So I continue. So basically what we figured out um, in the project that I'm leading, which, um, as you mentioned, is, is about identifying best practices in entrepreneurship promotion, is also that, um, that um, there are a couple of misperceptions around ecosystem building. And that ecosystem building is a, is a new term, particularly used in our industry, and a lot of people understand different things beyond uh, behind that term, or they actually use traditional approaches and just yeah, relabel it in a nice name. So the objective of my program really was to understand what is going on, what are best practices, and how can we bring those best practices back into the global community. And I think that very much is aligned with your vision from Startup Commons in really about sharing what we, what we identified and really about, you know, in a collaborative manner, find out how we can kind of like advance the understanding of, um, of ecosystem and entrepreneurship promotion. So before I really start um, with my presentation, I'm actually curious to hear from you because we have a lot of people here actively engaged around entrepreneurship promotion, ecosystem building. If you have to think about it, what makes up a healthy ecosystem, what would you say? So what are basically the drivers really for vibrant ecosystems? And I ask you to please quickly grab your mobile phone or open a browser and go to www.menti.com and use the code 987139 and just put top of mind thinking, what is it that, um, that comes to your mind? So what really are the drivers for healthy ecosystems? So I see a lot of ideas come around collaboration. It goes to how well are people connected, how well are um, the different actors connected. I see it should be, de should be decentralized. So we don't have any um, bottlenecks, inclusive um, entrepreneurs. Absolutely agree. Entrepreneurs are always, the ecosystem exists for a reasons. Um, big volume of innovative companies. So I guess that's, that's more as an outcome. So why are we actually doing ecosystem building? and supply and demand are efficiently matched. 
interesting. So we have something around experts, which I guess refers to know-how. And how can we use know-how in the ecosystem? Diverse infrastructure, trust, absolutely. And again, something around connecting and connecting the actors and, and the intensity of a network. Brilliant. I think this is um, a really good start. I will continue with the presentation. Um, but I think it's really also what we will be covering um, today in the webinars. Um, it's really about this interactivity and we will see how social network analysis is actually um, a suitable and appropriate tool for that. Um, so let me continue. And just apologies, it's not moving to the next slide, so I go quickly out and share back. Perfect. And I, I really would like to start a little bit about some of the learnings that we had and some of the misperception around entrepreneurial ecosystem building. Even though if I look at your comments that you just mentioned, I think we are very much aligned on that. So I think one of the first findings that we had is that, you know, support of startups can be measured by the number of ESOs or uh, entrepreneurship support organization or early stage funding. And this is a very common belief that we have found, but we realized that more is not always better. If those actors really work in silos um, and, 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 and the ecosystem is fragmented, there's no really working together. And it's really about this working together that really makes an ecosystem work efficiently. And it's also why we actually have this network approach because only through a network approach, we can actually ensure that this whole is greater than the sum of its parts. But that only works if we have a common vision, if we start working together and if collaboration between those actors is actually happening. So as you can see the fact, I think it's really that the key differentiator between a thriving and a not so thriving ecosystem is when the resources and the people within are really connected and they serve the entrepreneur throughout the stages of growth and development. So you can be a small ecosystem in number, but if you have a very vibrant ecosystem, that actually is still a very healthy ecosystem in, the, in, in that sense. And the second misperception we found is that there is sometimes this understanding of ecosystems, they grow like startups. And if I talk about growing like startups, it means that you actually can grow almost kind of from a zero to a hero if, you're, if, if certain conditions are met. And it's about moving up to the ladder, but this is really what we found not the case for ecosystems because ecosystems you do not overcome stages. And what I mean by not overcome stages means that it's almost a cycle that an ecosystem needs to provide. It's a journey that really helps on the first hand side to inspire future founders. So in that sense, it's really about showing the path, preparing them for the journey and giving them the right tools and equipment. And once they actually have this idea and they want to start their businesses, then the idea is really to provide them with the right support. So it's about incubating the new ventures. Over that, it's about facilitating the growth. So if you're coming to more of a scaling phase, then you should definitely have the support and they shouldn't be left alone in fighting their own journey. So it's also about how can we make sure that once they start making profit, so they're still part of that ecosystem and they can still get the support needed. And then the last one, which I think often is a bit overlooked, but super important is how can we capture that know-how of the successful entrepreneurs? How can we make sure that there are opportunities, there are incentives for those entrepreneurs to really share back so they became role models and they can actually help and support the new generations of entrepreneurs. So in sum, of course, an ecosystem can grow in majority. But what I mean by not overcoming stages, it's like you need to fulfill all those four functions. It's not 
enough that you start supporting and inspiring a lot of funders and then you move into supporting them in incubating their businesses, but then we start neglecting like the, 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 the first part. So as an ecosystem, you need to always be sure that you kind of like are, are able to provide the whole function for the entrepreneurs. And that might sound very clear or logically, but what we found, particularly in, in developing and emerging countries, that a lot of businesses are also following trends. So they start very, very much working with early stage entrepreneurs and then suddenly move more into kind of like accelerations and growth stages and they start neglecting the first stage. So it's important that we kind of like keep and, and, and make sure that this pipeline building um, really is continuously done. And then the third misconception, it's also how do you actually measure the health system? And if the unicorns, for example, which is a very popular way of measuring it, is the right way of doing it. And I know that, for example, Sweden calls themselves the land of the unicorns because they have been um, quite successful, actually, in bringing out unicorns and they claim to be the second highest to have the second highest density or, 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 or unicorns per capita in the world. But then what does this figure actually tell you about the health of an ecosystem? And I think it's tricky because of two reasons. First of all, if we just start counting what comes out, um, it's, it's actually looking into the back mirror and it's not looking forward. So it's not about an understanding what's going on, but more looking back and saying like, okay, this is what we achieved. Um, the second one, it's that unicorns often are what we call epitome of a one-man show. And we've seen also in your comments that in reality, actually rising an entrepreneur is a multi-player game. So it involves much more than just single organizations. And, 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 and this is also a story that needs to be told. So it's not about this one person that made it, but it's really about who was actually the collaborators to make that businesses succeed. And last but not least, um, I think it's also that if you look at ecosystems, there are much more businesses than just high growth businesses. Very often you have um, like sole property, uh, pro proprietorship businesses, you have local businesses that serve local consumers, you have supplier businesses that basically serve other businesses, and I think all of them are equally important. Particularly in, um, in developing countries or even in secondary cities, very often you have no chance to just become focused on the, on the super high growth business. But what really makes um, an area or a region sustainable in the long term, I think it stems from having the right combination of the right entrepreneurs. So I think it's very much about understanding also how diverse is such an ecosystem. And I think that's also a comment that somebody mentioned in the very beginning. So let's move on. So why does that actually matter, what I'm saying? I think it matters because it frames a little bit on how we look at ecosystem. And I think there's a fundamental difference if our objective is to measure ecosystem, meaning measure the outputs, or if we really want to get a better understanding of what is really happening in the ecosystem and how can we make sure to better design intervention, allocate the necessary resources to overall improve it. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but I think there are fundamental different approaches. And when we talk about understanding ecosystem, I think it's really about the question of what is going on. It's about, are we on the right track? Do we have this vibrancy that we really need? Do we have this exchange of information? Or are we just hunting down KPIs that are important, they make you look good, but maybe it doesn't inform you that much about where you really need to target your interventions to. And I like to use a little bit of an analogy here. And that's also why I mentioned health check in the very beginning. So I think it's a little bit about measuring the temperature versus visiting a doctor. If you're measuring the temperature, it's about confirming that you feel bad, or it's about confirming that you're on the right track and that you made something good. But if you really want to change, if you want to understand why this is happening, why you feel bad, just measuring temperature is not enough. So you need to go to a doctor and the doctor actually does a couple of different checks. It probably looks into your, uh, into your mouth, et cetera, to see whether there is an inflation. So there are certain health markers, I would say, that are relevant for being healthy and they will check it. And this ultimately gives you a little bit of an understanding of where um, to focus on. And I think what I'm going to present to you here, just as a side note, it's really about how can we make sure we understand our ecosystem to make more targeted, info, uh, targeted interventions to, to improve it over the long run. 
So it's not about having a benchmark or a house check that helps you to kind of like create a ranking. We do not want to do a ranking because we don't believe that it matters so much whether you are number five, number 15, or number 30. I think our objective really is that you're able to improve your ecosystem over time. And it can only be improved if you really understand um, how, how that ecosystem basically is working. So how do we do this? So how can we actually focus on this better understanding? And I mentioned in the beginning that we used social network analysis to do so. And that's for a couple of reasons. So first of all, social network analysis really gives you this possibility of looking at relationships and not only the actors. And we've seen it that interconnectivity actually plays a major role. It's not just the number of actors, but really how well do they collaborate with one another? How well do they share information? How much do the entrepreneurs actually interact with one another? The second reason is because SNA brings you somewhat objectivity. And it also acts as a mirror or also called as a reality check. So if you ask people in the ecosystem, probably everybody would agree that collaboration is important and interconnectivity is important. And everybody would say they are somewhat collaborating. But SNA really brings it on a visual picture and shows you, okay, this is what data tells us. And it allows you just for a very different type of conversation of the words, if you actually can prove that this is happening or it's not happening. And last but not least, we believe that SNA is also a way of having a more dynamic picture, how you're actually improving over time around certain indicators or markers. So the next one is a little bit giving you some, some feeling about how social network analysis can look like and what are kind of like possible outcomes. And this is, um, as we said, we did a couple of pilots. I'm focusing here mainly on Rwanda because that was our latest one and then Kambodja, which is still ongoing, but I included somewhat a little bit of um, some, some, some findings we have from there as well to give you um, a feeling. So starting um, or giving you some context, when we look at Kigali, Kigali actually is one of the highest they have one of the highest support or density of support organization in Africa and I think even worldwide. So if you look at the numbers, they basically have one entrepreneurship support organization for every 20 startups compared to Nairobi, which is one of the most dynamic one in, um, in, in Africa, it's, it, it's higher. And then you also have almost like one ASO for every 2000 graduates. So there has been a massive influx of organization opening up their businesses um, in Kigali over the last time. But if you then go and actually look on how they interact with one another, it tells you a very different story. So you have still a very lot of a fragmented ecosystem. You have very little interaction between the different co-working spaces, incubators. And even if you look at the financial landscape, they are basically very decoupled from the rest. And there's also um, a high risk and as gatekeepers, for example, that organization, um, BDF here called, it, it's, very, uh, it's very much of a bottleneck. If that for any reason falls apart, we would have a totally decoupled information uh, ecosystem. And it's very hard that, that, um, that information and the right knowledge is actually shared within that. And an interesting fact also is just to look like how mutual are these relationships. And we found that actually only 16% of all these relationships that you can see here actually are based on mutuality, which means that they are mentioned from both ends as a collaboration or an interaction, which means that it shows us a picture that this is very much like accidentally or coincidentally, and it's not yet really institutionalized. So yes, somehow you have connections, sometimes you're interacting with other, but it's more on this casual level and not so much on really having it institutionalized and, and, and having key partnership with one another. Um, another one, um, we also hear it's about healthy ecosystem or ecosystem where entrepreneurs are able to get the support they need. And if you look here at these numbers, I mean, the first observation is that almost half of the entrepreneurs in Kigali actually do have no access to any type of support services. Of course, there's always this question, does everybody need to have? Um, but I think it's an important one to understand that a lot of them, even though they want to, might not have access to any type of services. Um, another finding was that this type of, or, or like this accessibility is highly depending on the sector. When we talk about ICT, 
three out of four businesses had access to services. But if we talk, for example, um, uh, around an entrepreneur in tourism or in agriculture, actually, the or food processing, actually, the number of businesses having access to the services really drops quite significantly. And then the other one, which I think is quite interesting, is what we need to make sure as an ecosystem is that the, 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 the entrepreneurs are getting seamless support across the different growth stages. And if you look at the picture here, there are a lot of businesses that actually receive support from a single organization only, which means that this organization tends to offer a lot of support. But if you offer everything, you also it's very difficult to have like a very clear role to play and very professional services because you as a single organization are hardly able to provide top-notch services from ideation to market entry to being operational and even scaling up. But we've seen that this is still something that is happening quite often. So entrepreneurs are almost getting bought in and, 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 and ESO players start to kind of like own entrepreneurs instead of referring them to other organizations which probably could provide much better services themselves. Um, another one which I mentioned in the beginning, it's quite interesting to see is that I think peer exchange is a super important um, area to look at because um, particularly how much information is shared from more experienced entrepreneurs to less experienced entrepreneurs and how strongly do they interact with one another because it's about um, getting information is about access to kind of like informal information, but it's also about learning from failures. And ultimately, it's about acceleration, accelerating your businesses as well, if you don't commit the same mistakes. What we can say here in Kigali is that there is quite a lot of activity going in on at market entry level, but there tends to be very little at scaling and growth. And it's still important for scaling growth businesses that they start exchanging um, with, with others and particularly also sharing back. So the question is like, how can we keep those actors still very much engaged in the ecosystem? And how can we make sure that, for example, early stage uh, businesses are better supported? And if we compare this now with, um, for example, um, Cambodia, and these are preliminary results still, but we can actually see that um, sharing information among entrepreneurs, it really tends to be almost zero. So there are very few that actually interact with others. And the ones that interact, it's much more of a one-to-one -one relationship and it's not really interacting with many. And I think culture plays, for example, a role here that people feel they, they don't trust to share information. And they also kind of like, they probably trust only the people they really know. And I think this is one of the topics that is quite interesting also comparing um, one and others, like how much information is really shared and the people um, uh, actually have access to. And then another one, which I think is quite interesting to look at is also, for example, about role models. We know that role models, they play an important role because they can be a source of inspiration. They can be a source of kind of like look up and also provide the energy for local startups to really start with their venture. And if you look at Kigali and, and, and Phnom Penh in that sense, we can see that particularly in Kigali, actually there's a lot of just international people that are seen as kind of like the key role models. Various in Phnom Penh, you have much more of also local peoples. And I think this is important to notice, particularly if you think about inclusive ecosystems, if you want to celebrate diversity, the picture in Kigali tells you very much about most of those people here are actually have an IT background, do have an IT project or, or like highly successful companies. But it also gives you sometimes an impression that maybe I, I'm not an entrepreneur because I'm not like one of those guys. So in the worst case, it can actually discourage young entrepreneurs to really become part of their ecosystem because they don't feel that they can kind of like resonate well with them or because they don't have really local role models they can look up to and, and, and relate to properly. So this has been just a little bit of um, some, some diagnostics that we actually did in Kigali and some of the, the way you can use social network analysis to kind of like get more into the, the, the insights of an ecosystem to grasp like the, 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 the activities and the dynamics there. And one of the outcome we actually had as a result of the, the 
uh, of our research we did was that in Kigali there now is a, a new person that has been that new job has been created which really is about a hub network community manager because we realized that this collaboration is still not taking place so there's still too much isolation going on and that person really becomes like the go-to person to discuss potential gap make sure there is as little duplication as possible because we've seen that a lot are focusing on the same thing and that it's really about starting exchanging more um, and, and also about sharpening the value propositions so and understanding what the target groups are so in the end it's about understanding what is my role in the ecosystem and who else has actually helped me in in, in supporting the entrepreneurs so it's about collaboration both up and down streams where can I get the pipeline? Where do I get the, the entrepreneurs? Where my program fits as, um, as, as, as much as possible? And then also to whom can I basically refer to after my programs so they actually can continue on their journey? So that's maybe a little bit about the, um, the background of, of the work that we have been doing so far. And I think if you look at it, 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 it might be surprising, maybe not, but I think it's not about these classical output metrics, such as like how many jobs have been created, how much finance has been mobilized, et cetera. But I think it's really been focused more about this understanding and having some kind of like input metrics that paint you a picture of what is going on and really help you ultimately to steer your acti activities and to kind of like come up with more tailored solution on where do you want to focus on in, in, in the future. So our vision really is actually to kind of like make that as an open access platform for ecosystem builders with the objective that this house check can really be managed, everything on that platform from data collection to creating those visual that I shared and also to then basically, you know, share back the finding and learnings with the global community with the aim to somewhat consistent, have consistent mapping of ecosystems and to create benchmarks. And when we talk about creating benchmark, it's not about one is better than the other or we are kind of like, you know, better or highly positioned, but it's really also to, be get, to get inspired to actually see if you're looking at a more mature ecosystem, how that looks like to one that is maybe more nascent or still early stage and how can we then improve. And I think here an important part to mention is that the tool really is about improving over time and, and 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 if we start discussing measures how can we make sure that we are actually moving into the right direction so if we complete this health check maybe today and we complete it in a year's time we should be able to really see a change in dynamics on the subject we were focusing on i think equally important is to tell what we think that tool is and what this tool isn't um, I think that tool is really a snapshot and a reality, check, a reality check, as I said, of how vibrant is your ecosystem, how much activity is going on, how much interact, interchange, how much knowledge is being shared. And I think equally important, and this is really the findings that we had, it's ultimately an engagement tool. It's an eye-opener, it's a conversation starter. So it doesn't give you a solution how to do things, but it gives you a solution on where you may want to focus on and it gives you a very good entry point to start a discussion because it shows you how it is at the moment. And you will have very different conversation with the different ecosystem stakeholders if you can actually look at the map and you can discuss on why is it so fragmented? Why do we have subclusters and it's not kind of like a, a strong on? Why do we still have these kind of like gatekeepers? I think it, it, it allows you for having a very, very different conversation. And I think that also leads to what it is not. It is not a classical mapping tool. I think there are already a lot of classical mapping tools on saying what are the actors, what are these actors providing, what type of services they are providing. Um, and it's not a final solution in the sense that it's not about, okay, I do this mapping and I know all the answers. So, and I think that really um, brings me to the last point here. It's really, I think, focusing on the process and not just on having that solution. If we think ecosystem, I think we think about a complex system, we think about a messy system, and we also think about experimental systems. So this traditional approach of kind of like I do X and Y is happening, this is very difficult in ecosystem because you have so many different actors involved 
And I think the successful shaping of it really comes from iteration and from co-evolution and not by having kind of like, this is my plan and this is how I'm going to execute it. It's really about having these conversations, having the conversation, sitting together with the different actors and, and really kind of like get their buy-in, develop a vision on where you want to go to and then start defining um, some interventions on, on, on how we want to improve that. So how, so how could such a platform look like? And this is really just a very early prototype um, which we developed. But I think the point here is really that, as I mentioned, it's kind of like a full and inclusive um, platform that helps you to do the whole data collection. It has an integrated dashboard that helps you kind of see how many people already, um, you know, participated in that survey, what type of organization participated, do we have the right diversity we are looking for, et cetera. And then ultimately, once you have the data, this data, uh, these visualizations will be cre created automatically and then published in a gallery. So we can actually have a look at the different ecosystems. And we can say like, okay, let's, for example, understand how peer exchange is taking place in Berlin. We can maybe have a look at how it's taking place in Kigali, maybe even in a Latin American country. So I think that's an interesting one. So we start actually comparing and see um, and, and getting inspired um, as well by, by other ecosystems and how that is, is, is happening. And when we started developing this prototype, we still had in mind that, you know, we need to measure everything. But having had a couple of conversations, we actually changed that a little bit. And we came up and said like, okay, what are kind of like health markers we can look at? And our approach now is, to actually do this platform much more in a modular way. So there will be different modules. So you don't have to do a whole assay analysis across all different angles, but you can actually pick and choose and say like, okay, so what I think it for, it's super interesting in my ecosystem is to really understand, for example, the collaboration between ESO players. So do we have a decentralized ecosystem, for example? Do we have these gatekeepers? How much specialization is going on? How well are these interacted? If that's something you wanna know, then you could go for that module. If you say, what we're still struggling is actually about knowledge sharing from entrepreneurs, or how well do we keep entrepreneurs in the ecosystem over the long run? Then maybe it's more interesting to conduct an analysis around knowledge sharing among entrepreneurs. Another one, it's for example, understanding how access to services is happening. So do we have seamless support for entrepreneurs along the growth journey? Are we able to keep them in the system or are they leaving at some point? Then maybe that module will be more interesting. And I think what we try to do here and also is about understanding, so what makes an ecosystem thrive for our potential health markers? And these are the ones that we basically came up with for, uh, for the moment. And, and the idea is really to start and it's, it's very much on that left-hand side where we will be starting um, on, on, on that collaboration between ESOs on that knowledge exchange and having a, a more dynamic picture of how well entrepreneurs are able to, to access the different services in the system. And then because it's modular, we can always increase it. And I think it's also a joint initiative in the sense that if somebody actually has a very interesting tool and says like, hey, this is something that can be integrated, I think we are very open to have a platform that actually integrates even these kind of like health checks on analytical tools um, from third parties. So I'm almost at the end um, of my presentation. And I think I just want to make sure here it's also, um, it's still at the conceptual phase in the sense of like how we want to shape that platform. And I want to kind of like also ask a little bit about your experiences because we have a lot of people here with a lot of super good experience and really pick your brain and get like some collective brain power on what is the most treasuring thing that we should be measuring. What is missing in general? If we look at this health markers about these ecosystem dimensions, as we can call them as well, do we miss something substantially that you actually from your experience say, no, this is something we really need to look into. And then also, what are the most pressing one and who would be kind of like interested as well. And we are very open for that and kind of like unpacking those health markers, maybe a little bit further to really understand what are the specific elements or the angles that within those different uh, modules needs to be looked at. So that's a little bit about 
what I wanted to share with you, and I know it's still, um, it's been quite a bit of information. I don't know how long I've been talking right now, but I think it's been <laughs> probably also difficult to digest everything. And, and I know it's still a very rough concept of that platform that we envision to do. But I would still love to actually um, have a little bit of some feedback from you in kind of like how important or how relevant do you think such a platform is for your work from that very knowledge that you have now from that presentation and also um, if there is an interest from you to actually test it as well in your ecosystem. I know that is still at the idea level. Um, we can also take the assumption that this platform is very intuitive and user-friendly to use. I think that's just a must-have. But in that sense, like, what would be kind of like a little bit your interest so we can understand of, to get a little bit of a sense of how useful that is for you? So we started very high and now it's pendling in, in reality. So as a first general feedback, I would say that um, it seems to kind of like resonate well. Um, I, I totally understand that the devil is always in the details. It's still very high level, but um, I think it's, 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 it's nice and it's very encouraging for me to see that the work we have been doing is relevant. So you perceive it relevant um, for, 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 for your work. And I think it's, it's in that sense also encouraging to um, as a, as a very first kind of like idea validation and sense check to see that it's, um, it's definitely worth continuing on that path. And what I'm also very happy is actually to see how many people will be interested in testing such a tool afterwards in the ecosystem. So I, I leave it up, I, I maybe I, I leave it in for another um, minute or so, and then maybe we can start with the Open yes. Input, um, yes, and I, I think that that we can leave it. Uh, the slide uh, is, is live, so so people can still uh, giving you some feedback. And, and meanwhile, we can start also with the uh, Q and A part. So for me, I have to say that excellent presentation, Benny, and and, and wonderful uh, job that you you are doing, and. My, my, I would say that my mind is, is shooting to many directions when I got your presentation. So I, I have many ideas and, and, and comments and feedback to, to, to share with you. But I, I would like to highlight or I would say emphasize uh, in one of your quotes so that it is all about the, the process. So we, we usually tend or ecosystem builders tend to, uh, to find a magic tool uh, and solution uh, uh, basically to, to fix everything at ecosystem level, but at the end of the day, uh, I think that it, it is quite clear that what it is relevant is to uh, start uh, looking at the different available sources of information that are part of the ecosystem and, and basically try to, uh, to collect that information, to combine standardize that information because each of the different parties within the ecosystem are talking in different languages and terminology and, and analyze that information and, and data to basically to 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 a smart to make smart decisions uh to to take the ecosystem to the next level so in that sense it's, it's always a working a working progress process uh and, and along the way it will take you to to basically to the objectives that you, you are defining. So uh, let's go through the, the, the Q&A. 
uh, we have a good bunch of questions. So we're starting from uh, the first one. Uh, so what do you recommend to ecosystems that do not have relevant successful local entrepreneurs that are interested in participating in the ecosystem? Like for example, all family businesses or tenderpreneurs, et cetera. That's a tough one to start with. <laughs> it was the first one, sorry. <laughs> but I can, I, can, I can also, I can also no, jump no, on, I, on that. that. I think that's fine. I mean, for me, um, as, as I mentioned, it's also a little bit about that diversity of ecosystems, right? So when we talk ecosystems, sometimes we have a very narrow perspective and we have very narrow role models, as I said before. And I think having kind of like celebrating different stories, celebrating diversity, it's something that I see as highly re relevant because people need to feel kind of like, they need to be able to identify themselves with the ecosystem. And one of the challenges we also seen is that sometimes, particularly between the traditional ones I understand here and then the newer generation, is that they really don't speak the same languages. So sometimes the um, the, 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 the new ones are the very innovative ones. There's almost kind of like fear between those different type of um, people to talk to one another because the traditional business owner thinks that he might not be, you know, as innovative, doesn't speak the same language, but they still have a lot of, 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 of if information actually to share, particularly when it comes, for example, of how to run a business in process optimization, etc versus the younger guys that actually feels like, what else can actually an older generation tell me? Because, you know, they did it in an old way. So I think that is for me, one of the key topics as well. It's having it somehow breaking down those barriers, having somewhat of a similar understanding and, and really celebrating the different um, type of, of, of entrepreneurs because there are lots of different types. Yes, I, I would like to also add on, on, on that question that, uh, and, and this is quite, that, that is another, I would say, angle about what, why is so much needed the digitalization for ecosystem development efforts. So for example, it's quite uh, natural and, and um, usual when, when you are working uh, in a early stage maturity level ecosystem uh, that, uh, you are lacking many, many pieces and many components, like for example, uh, mentoring networks, uh, groups, or, or uh, investors or business angels, or as you said, uh, uh, experienced entrepreneurs. So if you want to move faster at ecosystem level, you cannot wait for the whole process to basically to get like more experienced uh, entrepreneurs or enough volume of mentors uh, that can contribute to the uh, ecosystem. So that's why the digital uh, here brings a lot of uh, value. So uh, you have to implement a digital approach to basically to connect with other ecosystems that are more mature and, and still get from them uh, value, like for example, uh, experienced entrepreneurs or mentors or investors or whatever that you are missing uh, in your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So more questions. So uh, which social network analysis tool do you use? Um, well, we have been using Kumu. Maybe I can put it in the chat as well afterwards. Kumu is actually, um, you can use it freely um, if you use public data or if you make your data public. And um, it's, it's, it's a very intuitive and user-friendly tool um, to, to start social network analysis. Good. Uh, what about an, an ecosystem's balance between private, public support organizations? So have you looked into that and how that impacts ecosystem performance? So, mm -hmm. so basically, um, and I wanted to share something around that, but um, as I said, we are still in, uh, because of the whole COVID-19 situation, a little bit delayed in Cambodia, but that's something what we are looking into. It's how much is actually, how well is the, the private sector as well involved in the whole ecosystem. Um, we are still not yet able to kind of like measure the impact in the sense whether it's more productive or not, but I think it's also an indicator the way we're looking at the moment around resilience and um, for example, how, how healthy are different ecosystem support organization. 
So whether they have different revenue streams, whether they are linked to private sectors, whether it's a totally donor funded, public funded institution, et cetera. Um, it would be definitely a next step into how can we measure the impact between public and, um, and private organization. So we're doing small steps on that one. Right. More questions. So uh, how are uh, health markers benchmark? So how do we know what is a healthy and an unhealthy ecosystem? Um, that, that is a good one. And um, I think what I presented here, it's based on findings and research from various institutions. So I think the Public Health Month Foundation, they did brilliant research around the relevance around interconnectivity, um, community building. We have other research as well from, from Genome, for example, on how, how important is it to have a sense of a community and, and how much connectivity relates to kind of like productivity. So I think those health markers that we identified, they have some, um, some, some, some real value behind, or we know why they are important. So they are backed up by, by kind of like a theoretical model. But at the same time, I also, and that's something I, I would love to do, and that's also why I, um, as I mentioned before, it's like having really some practical inputs on what do you see as relevant health markers. I think we are still in the beginning of that. We identified a few of them, but I think it would be super interesting to actually hear from practitioners around what should be the health markers we, we, we should be looking at. So any feedback on that is actually highly welcome. Yes, I, and I also have to say that at the end of the day, it's, it's this type of markers or measurements or uh, whatever we want to, to use to uh, basically to measure the, the, the health of the ecosystem. It's also related to how you define what is a healthy ecosystem. So, and I think that, if that, that was also a part of your presentation in the beginning. So each of us has different meaning about how to define a healthy ecosystem. So it's impossible to, to use the same metric or marker to, to measure different definitions. So at some point, uh, it has to be agreed among the ecosystem actors uh, uh, what is uh, a, health, a healthy ecosystem. So what would be a, a growth path or indication of ecosystem health? So we, are there any, like say, any journey or key steps that it should be taking? Um, well, I think that that's a very broad question as well. Um, that definitely goes beyond just our analysis. Um, I think in the sense of what are healthy ecosystems, as I said, I think there are certain indicators, for example, about this connectivity. But is there, for example, something that, um, I mean, when we the connectivity, for example, it can be between zero and one, right? But is it really needed to get it to a one? Probably not. So I think having these benchmarks also would help to understand a little bit, um, you know, what is a good level of interconnectivity um, needed? And the other one is, I think, as I said, it really is about the discussion starter. So it also should be set up by the, by the ecosystem um, themselves and to say like, okay, this is where we want to focus in and this is how we want to do it. As I mentioned, I think the whole vision building is something super important that goes beyond just our social network analysis, but social network analysis can really help you starting that conversation because people, you know, start on understanding like, okay, what should be done in order to collaborate more strongly? But it's difficult to say that there is a, a single growth path. I don't believe in a single growth path. I think every ecosystem somehow has certain tendencies. And I think, as I said, sharing of knowledge is super important. And if this is not happening, then we have to overcome it. But how do we overcome it? That's a big question. Yes. That is, this, is, this next question is also very re relevant. So what happens to the collected data on the platform? So will it be publicly available for everyone? This is really what we are um, striving for. I think for us, the more public data we have, the better it is because it allows also to do cross comparisons, et cetera. Um, of course, there is sometimes some sensitive information to it in the sense like um, if we talk about investment figures. And we had, there was another question around whether we have actually had a look at, 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 at financial flows. Yes, we looked at financial flows. It wasn't included here, but we had a specific look around that. And some people feel very uncomfortable of presenting these figures. Ultimately, I think the idea should be, yes, it will be public figures so everybody can actually use it. 
Great. Yes, I, I also have to say that uh, um, in that sense, uh, what we are doing in Europe around the GDPR directive is, is also very, very good to be added to that platform so that basically uh, each of the owners of the data uh, decide what data they want to share and, and what not. So that, that is uh, actually one of the, the solutions that we, we are uh, uh, developing uh, for this type of approaches at ecosystem level. Some more questions. We still have some, some time, so uh, four minutes to finalize the session. But for example, uh, there is one person asking how uh, do, we, do we get access to, I would say, to the platform? So do you have any type of roadmap to, to basically to a first live version or? Um, as I said, at the moment, it's very much about the conceptual phase still. Once we actually do have a prototype, um, it, it would be open. I mean, it would definitely be interesting to actually get the different, um, you know, everybody who feels interested in it and is participating in that webinar, please drop me an email and I'm happily reach out to you once we actually have that, um, that, that, that prototype ready, so you're also able to test it. Ultimately, it will be public, publicly available. Uh, we will be promoting it, but I think to first test it, um, it would definitely be good to start with that group that shows an interest. Yeah, good. So uh, someone says that uh, the platform is a great idea. However, getting people to join in and inputting data is a real challenge. So what is your view and solution for this problem? Um, I think what we need to do is um, we, we definitely have to create a couple of um, cases. So from our sides or with people that feel very strongly about, hey, I want to test it. Once we actually can prove and, and, and show the benefit of, of, of measuring this data and what can actually come out of it, then I think this is the way of um, engaging to a broad, uh, wider audience. But our approach is very much to kind of like, you know, with some um, people that really want to champion it. And also from our kind of like um, experience and footprint we have as an organization to start with the first ones and then really show the added value that it can bring. Yeah. Good. So uh, another question. So uh, which order you try to intervene to grow an ecosystem? So I guess that's meant more generally, um, yeah. not not specifically on social network. Okay, okay. so um, more. But, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I think in, in the sense of um, what what we've seen is particularly, um, I think one of, one of the important one. And I think that's very much aligned with uh, you, um, Oscar, and it's about having this common vision. So people actually should know why they are working together. Um, they sh sh it should also be something about what makes your ecosystem different to the other ecosystems and why should I be participating? It also needs to get something back. So there needs to be a clear understanding of what this different, um, what the different actors can bring, but also what they get from an ecosystem. I think that's a discussion that needs to take place in the very, very beginning. Yeah. And, and, and then it's really about, <clears throat> um, it, it's a bottom up approach. You will have people falling out of it. You will have people championing a couple of topics. And then it's really about supporting those that want to measure or, or, or implement certain um, initiatives there. OK, good. So we have the last question. So why, how did you pick the communities you are in and measuring, like Africa and Cambodia, Rwanda? Um, very practical one. This is, um, this is where my project is mainly focusing on. I have um, six countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And the reason why we've picked some of them is also to have some comparability between the different regions. Right. So I think that we can stop here. That is all from, from, from our side today. Thank you again, Benny, uh, for, for this great presentation and for your inputs and your transparency to, to basically to showcase your uh, still MVP. But I think it was really valuable to basically to, to, to try to understand the philosophy and the approach that you, you want to, uh, to develop. Uh, and, and thanks everyone for, for attending uh, one more week to a Startup Commons webinar series. 
Uh, we are preparing more. Uh, we don't have a clear uh, date for that, but we will keep you uh, updated about the, the new webinars coming. So thanks so much, everyone. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.